Well, my name is Pierre, and uh, I trained in Japan as a swordsmith for five and a half years, traditional uh, Japanese swordsmithing. Um, basically, I spent about 10 years in Japan uh, living there and then training as a swordsmith. And I came back to Canada and I just built my smithy when I'm, I'm about to start uh, practicing here. The Westerners have been trying to understand and explain Japan the way they try to, uh, you know, put knowledge in boxes. It's always the same thing. You know, we try to analyze and understand things. And so they've been trying to understand and analyze Japan since it's open to the West in the late 1800s. So a lot of people wrote about Japan and try to explain Japanese culture uh, a lot in the late 1800s and early 1900s. And so we have these uh, concepts that explain Japanese cultures, like Bushido, for example, the way of the warrior. And one of them in management is Shuhari, or in apprenticeship, Shuhari. It's the steps, the three uh, phases, the three stages to uh, learning uh, in Japan. The Japanese don't really know about this concept because it's a very Western approach to trying to understand and categorize and organize knowledge, something they don't do in Japan. Uh, only a handful of people, of Japanese people or Westerners interested in Japan did. So this knowledge, these concepts, these ideas exist. But it's important to know that it's very Western. Um, but still, it doesn't matter, it's not true. Shuhari does exist in Japan it, and it happens. It's just that they don't do it consciously. So the idea be behind uh, Shuhari is that um, it's, it's the phases to learning. And it's, uh, for example, Shu is mimicking, uh, you know, monkeying, as I like to say, the, the master. So you have a model, a role model. It could be whatever, in your, in your business, in, in, in the business, or in the smithy with the blacksmith, um, there's a role model. And you basically, what you're asked to do is to simply mimic him. You don't ask questions, you don't question yourself. He, you know, he raised the left hand, you raise the left hand. He, you just mimic him until this becomes natural for you. This is the first phase. The second phase is that you, it becomes natural. So it's called, it's like the black belt, the black belt in martial arts. So black belt is uh, going beyond shoe. That's, that's basically what it is. So in Japan, martial arts starts at the black belt. So until the black belt is you mimicking and just learning the techniques and making them your own. But when you're a black belt, you're considered to have assimilated, so the techniques are natural for you now. You don't have to think about the technique, and now you can use the technique to do something else with them. And this is what is, uh, this is Ha, actually. And uh, Li is breaking from the tra tradition, so you're basically using all this uh, knowledge, profound knowledge that you have, and you reinvent, you break away from the tradition, and you re reinvent your own tradition. So this is when you improve. However, the important thing is to understand that Shu, Ha, and Li are not uh, distinct phases in a lifetime. This is something that happens, it's con constantly um, intermingling. So you, you, you might be doing Shu for five years and then you're a little bit of Ha, and then you redo a little Shu while you're doing Ha, and then you're going back and forth, and it all mixes together. And then at some point in your life, you do Li a little bit, but then you're still doing Shu also for other things. and then. So it's very, it's, it's, it's very organic, it's very chaotic, it's not, it's not linear at all. I really like this idea of uh, using the word kata. Uh, I think it's, it's the latest in one of these Western uh, efforts to try to uh, explain uh, Japanese culture. Uh, it's the shoe part of learning. Uh, it has to do basically with mimicking and uh, and just copying a role model until uh, you make it your own. And I've heard this uh, this expression which says, uh, fake it until you feel it. And I, I really like this idea um, that you can, uh, if you don't agree or you don't understand something, you can still do it, basically just accept to do it. And at some point, it might actually become natural for you to do it. And you will be the first to say that this is the best way to do something. Um, so this is why learning with the body and learning the, with the mind is very different. So when you learn with your body, um, you have a, a whole set of, of uh, experiences, of uh, senses, emotions that uh, come into account, which doesn't happen when you learn with your mind. Um, so, uh, and, and also learning with the body, uh, they say in Japan, karada de oboiru. It's, uh, it's really learning with your body uh, instead of uh, simply understanding. And uh, when you learn with the body, it's very hard to forget it. Whereas when you learn something intellectually, you could be, uh, I know for sure, you can forget hours later, you know. But it's like riding a bicycle when you learn it with the body. Uh, even if I explain the bicycle to you for hours, you won't, you won't know how to ride it. But once you've learned it while riding a bicycle, then you never forget. And um, 
So I think uh, the idea of kata is is very interesting for this because in, instead of trying to convince somebody of, of practicing of uh, adopting uh, managerial or work practices, you get them to uh, fake it at some point or to to just do it basically without uh, asking questions or maybe without agreeing, but uh, they get to assimilate and and do it naturally. Uh, the important part in this is to never forget the goals, what we're we're aiming for and where we're going with this. If they get to uh, assimilate uh, continuous improvement practices in their daily routines, then they can reach the goal without making any specific effort. It becomes natural for them. So when I when I learned, when I discovered uh, what Mike Rother is doing with uh, Kata, I, my first reaction, and it was just a feeling I had, it was, wow, he's, he's taking the artisan back uh, to work. He's, he's bringing back the craftsman into uh, humans at work. And I really, I was pleased with, uh, with the feeling that gave me. And I don't know how uh, companies, the corporate cultures will react to this, uh, how they will resist to bringing back somebody with an organic, organic know-how, an organic way of, of proceeding with work and accumulating uh, true valuable knowledge uh, in their work. Uh, I think it's a good thing uh, for society and for companies as well. I think it, it makes uh, people that work better and more efficiently and, uh, and give more uh, results. But uh, I'm, I was very pleased to see this.